Welcome to another riveting installment of my multi-tool saga series. Today's put it in a background tab type entertainment is a detailed examination of each revision of the Leatherman Super Tool tools. But in order to draw it out as long as possible, I need all three revisions, right? Well, you're in luck because that means we'll be looking at the original Super Tool. The Super Tool Strikes Back, or the Super Tool 200. And what are we at now? Oh yeah, Return of the Super Tool or the 300. The reason why I find older Leathermen still relevant, other than their cheap channel content, is that they basically have that 25 year warranty and eBay is a great place to score a lightly used, heavily abused, or even broken Leatherman at a decent price. If it's broken, send it in and they'll fix or replace it. Or if it's loose, just ask them to tune it up. All you're out of shipping. All of this still much cheaper than a lot of the folding knives I review on the channel and also the Victorinox Swiss tool, which no one seems to want to let a used one go for under 60 bucks or so. Which is understandable because apparently they're unbreakable, way lighter, have more tools, and feel better in the hand than any Leatherman. Trust me, bro. I want to say I paid about 60 bucks for all three of these tools. This review, other than taking two hours to upload, seven hours to edit, and another three hours to write and edit my audio, will examine mainly the current model of the 300, and we'll start out by doing some basic dimensions of the Super Tool 300 and not any of the others. Although if I did that, I could probably make it a full 20 minutes, which would make it my best review yet. First, let's look at the weight and the weight of the leather sheath that I have for this. There are quite a few sheath options available. This is the all leather black one. Yep. Then the closed length, the width of the tool and the thickness. Note that this is much bigger than the PST, the PIST, or the WAVE. How about that open length and the grip area for the, for the pliers? Surge sized. Remember when Surge came back? Yeah, that was stupid. Blade size, cutting edge, spine, and uh, total length with the blade out. Are soda reviews a thing? I mean, I'm sure they are. I probably have seen one before. I don't know. I mean, people spend 15 minutes talking about pocket knives, sorry, I meant pocket knife, a 15 minute pocket knife video, and the length of the other blades. This is not talking about the cutting edge though. All right, so somewhere in 1994, Leatherman says, this is America, we need to make a tool to reflect American values, which is bigger and more or something. I want people who carry Swiss army knives to feel some goddamn shame for a change. Plus, the Swiss are communists. Uh, Mr. Leatherman? I assume Tim Leatherman talks like the Disney character Pete. Or maybe a little more like Alex Jones. So they came up with the original Super Tool, which was the first Leatherman, now correct me if I'm wrong, and I know you will, the first Leatherman tool with all locking tools. And finally something America-sized. Although the way they locked was kind of awkward compared to the more advanced mechanisms nowadays, it was larger than the PST and had that nice clean look when closed. As such, the basic formula was set into stone for all future Super Tool revisions. Big, all shit locks, it's plier based, and it needs to be open to access any of the internal tools. So, looking closer at the first generation of the Super Tool, you have pliers of the needle nose persuasion with wire cutters and a crimper underneath. The internal tools are as follows. To new viewers, I am in fact married, and not even to a real doll. A three inch ish standard blade actually a slightly smaller cutting edge over the Leatherman wave, for whatever reason, an awl, a medium flathead, a large flathead, a double-sided file with also an edge file. On the other side of the handle, you get a serrated blade that's kind of pointy, a beer slash can opener. I mean, not a beer can opener, a bottle and a steel can opener, which on a Swiss Army knife, that's two tools, and of course two is better. On a Leatherman it's the same tool. Then we go to the Phillips head, a small tweaker screwdriver, and a goddamn saw. Now if there's a bastard file there's got to be a goddamn saw. Of course all of my tools are goddamn tools whenever I can't remember where I laid it. So let's look at how it locks up. Click. And to unlock the current tool you have out you need to bring a second tool out and it raises the lock mechanism and you close it. Now if you're stupid and open all the tools at once like someone filming a YouTube video might, you'll need a separate flathead screwdriver to raise the lock bar. You wedge it under there like this, 
and then you can close them. Now on to the second revision, the SuperTool 200. The biggest change was an improved locking mechanism that has a slight rattle to it. Sorry, tactical bros. It made the tool thicker and added those side locking things here that kind of stick out and may catch on your sheath. But basically, you take the tool out, it locks, and when you're done playing with said tool, pull back on the lock thingamajigger with your hand, unlock and close. It's sort of a strong pullback. So, yeah, thought I should note that. There are a few tool differences too, which sadly I'll point out. All tools are laid out the same order as the original in the 200. The tools on the side of the file and the straight edge blade are identical on the 200 and the original, at least on mine. I know sometimes they do some revisions within the line, so um, there's that. Uh, could you just go over them again anyway? However, there are two differences on the other side, for example. The serrated blade does not have a pointy tip, and it's more like a sheep's foot style, meaning it's safer for cutting close to humans or inflatable humans when removing something like a seatbelt. So you're less likely to accidentally deflate your girlfriend if you remove her from a burning car and have to also remove her seatbelt. The only other difference in tools is this one adds a lanyard ring. You have to open from the inside, push it through the handle, and it goes the opposite way as the other tools. This tool, when using pliers, is more comfortable than the original super tool because the tops of the internal tools are rounded better, as are the handle edges. I want to say it's even more comfortable to hold and plier things than with the Super Tool 300, which of course is the current model of the Super Tool, which we're going to do right now. Now, like prior versions, this tool is big and locks, and then the furniture has really been rearranged on the deck, the biggest change being the improved lock release mechanisms. There are simpler design and easier to release tools than the older versions. Just press with the thumb. You're like, why didn't they do that in 1994? I don't know. Up top, you get those replaceable 154 CM wire cutters, which is helpful if you are putting up a fence at the ranch. This also means the plier head is wider and a little uglier, if you ask me, which is a real endorsement coming from a guy putting up a review of a multi-tool on a website with thousands of hours of chemtrail-related content. The tools are mostly updated, although laid out the same-ish. On the straight edge side, you get a blade that looks to my eyes to be in half an inch longer than the Super Tool and the Super Tool 200's blade. The cutting edge on the older versions is about two and a half inches, and the cutting edge on the 300 is about 2.85 inches. Blade steel on the 300, serrated and straight edge is 420 HC, like on a lot of many non premium bladed Leathermans. I couldn't find solid information if that was the steel used in the original Super Tool in the Super Tool 200. You got an improved awl with a hole and a sharper edge. I'd say it's improved because it looks like it has been. There's additions to it and changes, so that means it's better, right? Another great opinion from a man who has used an awl on his multi-tools two or three times in his entire life, and is also in his late 30s making YouTube videos. The large and medium flatheads are now wider with thicker edges than the prior versions, which is great. Then you get the lanyard loop, except it opens the way all the other tools do now. And then the file, which is curvier and has updated texture. Now, I'm not a file expert, but if you are, here are some side-by-side -side shots. One side first, and then the other. We gotta be at 10 minutes, right? The other side sees a new saw with a thinner side profile and, I don't know, more curved. The tiny tweaker screwdriver, which is a favorite tool on my original Leatherman, and the Wave, and the original... Super Tool has been replaced by a flathead about twice as wide. Shame on you, Leatherman. Next, the Phillips head screwdriver is close to the same size, but a different design. It's a fraction of an inch longer and seems thicker in the neck on the 300. Bottle slash can opener and the serrated blade has been updated again. How about some visual comparisons of all the tools? First closed, all laid out. Nerd porn. I mean, tool nerd porn. An important distinction of the type of nerd. How about the thickness? Uh, that's with two C's. There's a nerd for everything, right? Pliers out, and their home is YouTube. Not too shabby. 300 has a, a thicker head. How about all tools open? Nice. I feel like we need this shot. Do we need this shot? And the straight edge blade open. And now every single tool side by side just kidding. Cool. Comparisons. Not cool comparisons, just comparisons.
We'll stick to the 300 though. The 300 is probably the best of the three. However, the handle isn't quite as comfortable as on the 200. Even though the edge is rolled further on the inner handle, your hand still rubs on the edge of the rolled edge, especially during vigorous tool use sessions, vigorously playing with your tool. I wish it maintained the tweaker screwdriver and had a deeper rounding on the handle. Then I'd like it a whole lot. Okay, I wouldn't carry it because it's too bulky on the belt and heavy. I prefer a smaller footprint in a tool like the Wave or the PST. And now the Leatherman Surge. This tool is better than the Super Tool, in my opinion. This is, of course, the older version without the replaceable wire cutters. The new Surges have those now. The handle is a nice rounded edge, a significant improvement in comfort over this Super Tool line. The blades are accessible from the outside. It has scissors, so you can cut your hair. You can do. You can become a barber. Bit drivers like the Wave, which are good. I like the bit drivers. Although you do have to switch out the saw and the file, which is kind of weird. Now the Leatherman Wave. It and the Surge are similar in their function, but this is lighter and a smaller belt carry. Since I don't own a ranch or don't work on a big rig, you know, you choose rig type, a smaller pair of pliers is just dandy for me. Functionally, I don't feel like I'm losing anything. All right, how about the Pist? Now, functionally speaking, the Super Tool has more tools originally than the PST. So other than the size, I think it's a step up. Plus all the tools lock, brah. This is, of course, if you need those extra tools, like the saw. I've been told more tools is always better. The Super Tool is missing scissors, though, and I use those quite a bit. I mean, so is the original PST missing scissors. Maybe it's not better. Maybe that's why I spent hours of research and arrived at the Wave after I had the original PST and skipped the Super Tool altogether until, of course, I had a YouTube channel. Anyway, as far as what else to say, I don't know. If you need a good car multi-tool, one for the shop or a spare one or collect things that really don't need to be collected, these are all good values. Many of the Super Tools have plenty of time left on their warranty. Check the date code on the inside of the handle to, to know for sure. Leatherman has been known to fix tools outside of the warranty area. No promises though. The Super Tool is a good value on the used market. If you look, you can find the original or the 200 for under $30. Maybe the Super Tool 300 for about 40 or 50. If you ask me which one I prefer, I'd say probably the 300. But since I only paid $50 for a used Surge on eBay, and if I needed a larger multi-tool, I get that one. My advice would be to shop used for a Surge instead of buying a new 300 because you might find a better price and it would still be under warranty. Anyway, if you like this review, I wouldn't. And wonder why I still haven't reviewed a charge yet. Subscribe to the channel. I need more subscribers to be able to afford that shit. Give the video a thumbs up. Leave a nice comment. Thanks for watching.